I was looking forward to it for a long time since the day I got drafted. I try to make plays, so if, if you're a playmaker, I want to do the same. I mean, I'm just trying to feel my spot and I play my, play my part on the team. We're just going to keep our head down and keep working. All right, let's talk about the Chiefs day two of rookie minicamp and take a look at some photos and videos from yesterday, then dive into five pressers, including Isaiah Pacheco's hilarious draft story and hear from Justin Ross himself. But first, how about those... What's up, guys? My name is Cole, and I do daily news about the Chiefs and the NFL overall. So, hey, sub if you're new, hit that like button if you like Andy Reid in a Hawaiian shirt, and let's get into this news. First off, I want to apologize to you guys, as I believe I had some of you scared when I said yesterday that Mahomes and his wife Brittany dropped their baby off at a babysitter. The pause there after the word baby was a cause for concern and accidental in how it was perceived. They definitely didn't drop their baby and I don't wanna be the cause of more spreading of fake news than there already is. So please forgive me for that and also for the horrible attempt of the Justin Bieber joke. That joke was about as bad as the Raiders success in the playoffs since Derek Carr has become their starter. And my sense of humor is so dry that it's hard to know if this segment is even a sincere apology or me just continuing to troll per usual, I guess, you will never know. All right, there's a couple videos you guys need to check out after this video you are watching right now. Our new running back Isaiah Pacheco recently started a vlog on YouTube and he dropped a video yesterday that's about four minutes long with some BTS of him getting drafted. And then also, same day yesterday, wide receiver Sky Moore dropped an hour long documentary on his path to the draft. So yeah, for Isaiah's short vlog, you could probably watch that one on the toilet real quick, but for Sky Moore's video, you might wanna get some popcorn and watch that tonight like a movie. Okay, Chiefs rookie minicamp is still on, like Donkey Kong, and you can see here players putting in that work, as well as the coaches, we can't forget about them. I see Isaiah Pacheco out there. You have George Carl Loftus. This clip is crazy of him coming in like a wrecking ball, tossing aside Jerry and Ely as if he's merely a minor inconvenience. Then you have a short clip of Trent McDuffie running with the football, as well as another couple clips of wide receiver Justin Ross. Ross, who everyone is very excited to see footage of. I also see Andy Reid out there looking nice in them Nikes. And then you have senior assistant and QB coach Matt Nagy out there working with the guy. So that is nice of him, you know, to be out there doing his job and being all nice and stuff. So good work, Nagy. From there, we had five pressers yesterday. So let's jump into them like a trampoline and get into it. Offensive lineman Darian Kennard was excited to put on a Chiefs jersey for the first time and grace the field with his mighty presence. He didn't really say that, but you know, he looks like a demigod. He's enjoying digging into the playbook and soaking up all that he can. Last season, the Chiefs had multiple rookie starters on the offensive line, and that gives Kennard a lot of motivation. He knows, though, that... That does not guarantee him a spot on the roster, or at least as a starter by any means, so he knows he's got to work and earn his spot. And leading up to the draft, a lot of teams saw him as a guard potentially in the NFL, but with the Chiefs, he said, It's pretty cool that, you know, coming in, they see me as a tackle, but at the end of the day, I was gonna come in and compete for any job I could, so. Uh, it's pretty reassuring that I could play tackle in a position I've been comfortable with, and uh, now it's just time to get working. He's played the majority of his snaps at right tackle, so he feels most comfortable there, but he said he feels confident he can play wherever he's needed, whether it's at guard or tackle. And at minicamp this weekend, he's actually out there getting fully immersed, like a baptism, playing left tackle as well. And some of the media guys are similar to that of a broken record, asking the same questions over and over again. So he was asked about the whole situation of him getting drafted later than projected and being upset by that and how he plans on using that as motivation. Chips on my shoulder, but uh, you know, got to be smart minded and keep my head down and work. Uh, first things first, I got to compete for a job and then, you know, I can uh, keep carrying that chip on my shoulder against other teams. And I liked his answer about just worrying about competing for a J-O-B first and foremost. But hey, this man has rather large shoulders here. So what he keeps referring to as a chip on his shoulder is probably more realistically the size of a boulder. Anyway, yeah, they're having a good time training at camp, but he's really trying to grasp the smallest of details, making sure he's handling those accordingly. And with such large hands, I could see why that would be such a difficult task. He was then asked a very interesting question. Any barbecue yet? 
<laughs> Not yet. And I listened to this clip at least 10 times to make sure, but I'm nearly as positive as a pregnancy test that the reporter just asked him if he'd gone pee yet. And this interview ends on a very weird note, and I'll explain. Kennard talked about changing his hair from blue, which represented Kentucky where he played prior to getting drafted, to red before the start of the season, and listen to the lady's response here afterwards. This will turn red eventually, so <laughs> just know that. I'm all into that. She said, I'm all into that. Really, lady, are you now? So she's either a redhead herself or just really likes men with red hair. And if that's the case, she came off a bit forward, if you ask me. But hey, you do you, lady. And then running back Isaiah Pacheco took to the podium and spoke briefly about his new mixtape titled 856 that recently dropped. And the reporter seemed surprised by the self-promotion, but went along with it and asked him for his artist name and the reason behind the title of the 856 mixtape. It's a little poppy. Then A56, uh, the area code in New Jersey, so I use A56 a lot. I must confess that I straight up lied to y'all about this one, and for that I do apologize. They were just asking him about his Instagram handle and the reason behind it, and that is all. It was a childhood nickname given to him that stuck, so yeah, no new music from our running back Isaiah. Instead, he talked about why he chose the number 10. It was his number as a freshman in college, and while he knows who wore it previously, Tyreek Hill, he doesn't feel any pressure about that. He said it's the player and how they execute and not the number that is worn. He talked about working on the playbook with Coach Lewis and settling into a routine here in KC, and then shared his hilarious draft story. Coach Reed was actually was hot live, and I I heard him say, "Go, somebody, uh, I believe they said we're going to turn your ticket and and you know turn the TV on." So we're we're good. We're good, man. We're going to turn this card in, all right? Just uh, turn the TV. <laughs> Turn the TV on and enjoy. I was so excited. I put the phone in my pocket. Mind you, I didn't even, didn't even know I, I didn't even hang up. And Coach was still on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and, and everybody was just screaming. Coach was like, wow. Like. <laughs> Isaiah, are you alive? Are <laughs> <Like>, you alive? <laughs> I, like, I can't even hear you just screaming. So definitely a blessing. Uh, I'm blessed to be here and, and ready to take advantage of the opportunity. So yeah, he got so excited that he just put the phone in his pocket to celebrate and didn't even hang up. You love to see it. He said he thought he was going to be possibly drafted in the third round, maybe late, but didn't seem too bothered that he went later than that. He's honored for the opportunity and... For me to just, you know, just be in the position I am, just take advantage of it go block my behind off of Patrick. So yeah, he's mentioned this a couple times before about specifically being excited to get the opportunity to block for Patrick Mahomes. He said he enjoys the physicality of the sport and enjoys blocking for his QB. He then said he's willing to do whatever it takes to make this roster, any position, any time. So I took that as he's willing to play special teams, pass block, run, catch the ball. He does not care. He just wants to play for this team. He gets his motivation and his confidence from uh, my hardships, losing two siblings and for me to make it to where I'm at today. It was a lot of hard work done and leaned on my mother and my parents for them to guide me to make my sister and my brother proud looking down on me. So for me to just go out there and play hard for them uh, and my family, um, I'm gonna do so. So yeah, this took a bit of a turn here, a little heavy, but losing people you care about is never easy, and this is certainly a tough one to talk about, guys. Pacheco is the youngest of five kids and has lost two of his four siblings to violence. In January of 2016, his older brother was stabbed to death at his own apartment complex, and about a year and a half later, September of 2017, his sister was found in her house dead from a gunshot wound. So he constantly uses their memory for motivation in life, and he just seems honestly like a great kid. So you hate to hear about this kind of stuff. Death and tragedy like this is certainly difficult to deal with and to navigate, but hey, this is getting pretty heavy here. So let's move on to cornerback Jalen Watson. He's been looking forward to his rookie minicamp since the day he was drafted and is honored to be here. I must say, he sounds like a very genuine guy, like someone you could just hang out with and kick it. His answers were very genuine. And yeah, I enjoyed his interview a lot, probably the most out of anybody yesterday. He talked about the time he took a year off from school, came back home, and quickly became stir-crazy, so he tried to find a job, couldn't find one, and then his mom... She's the manager at um, Wendy, so I end up working with her, and I love her to death, but it was terrible, but... <laughs> <laughs> 
It's so bad. Like, you get no breaks away from your mom. You go to work, you with your mom, you go home, you with your mom, you can't even talk about work or it, it was just bad. But I still love her. So yeah, he basically said, if possible, do not work for one of your parents. He then talked about playing against Trent McDuffie in the past and the time he trolled him at the Combine. Um, I met Trent at the Combine and I told him, um, how did it feel for us beating them that bad? Because <laughs> I never lost to you, Doug. That was my first time playing them. And all jokes aside, he spoke about how nervous he was during the draft as the rounds kept continuing and he hadn't yet received a phone call. And so he actually went to his car with a buddy to just listen to music and kind of get away and focus up on the draft when he got the call. Then they called, I, I seen the Kansas City area code. Me and my friend looked at each other and our eyes got super big. And they said, this is the Chiefs. And I was just so excited. I started running full speed down the street. Everyone in the house seen me. They was like, what's wrong? Who is it? Who is it? I was like, it's the Chiefs. And just imagine being his family and looking out the window. Carter, suffering from heat exhaustion, fell into the arms and they were probably looking behind him to see if he was getting chased by a chihuahua or something. But nope, he was just so excited that he had to go and do some quick wind sprints. It's a hilarious response, but I freaking love it. He said he visited the Chiefs prior to the draft, left there and said, this is where I want to be. He feels he's a great fit for the team based on his play style. Love getting my hands on people. I live off um, physicality. I like to get my opponent's head and... That's what I live for. And he also loves winning, which this organization has certainly done a lot of over the years. And then the man, the myth, and the legend, Justin Ross, took to the podium and the media was definitely ecstatic about that. Justin spoke about his injuries, the hard work involved in overcoming them over the years, and then the more recent, the broken foot, and that all he's been through. And he said he feels good pretty much back to himself. He chose to sign with the Chiefs because... H having, you know, Pat Mahomes, great quarterback, Andy Reid, great coach. Mm -hmm. And then it's like good, good receiver group. It's a, it, it feel like a family here. I only been here for like a day, but like they, they treat me like family. So. And his college teammate Cornell Powell has been helping him a lot with the draft process, which was pretty cool to hear. He says he models some of his game after Keenan Allen because pretty tall guy. He like six two, six three. So he and, and can move real good. Move, run route, run good routes and stuff like that. He was hoping to get drafted, but he knew that signing on as a UDFA was a real possibility because of his injuries. So he's totally fine with it and is willing to prove himself here in KC, but he's certainly excited to be here. I don't know, it felt good, man. Cause like, like, like you said, with, with, with what I had going on, you never knew if I was gonna be able to be out here at all, period. So yeah, it felt, it felt real good. And he's seen players like him have success in KC, like Sammy Watkins, and feels he can contribute in a similar way. He doesn't seem cocky by any means, but definitely confident that he can contribute successfully on this roster. His goal and mindset at the moment is simply... Just to get my foot in the door, try to make plays. And I won't lie to you all, some of this man's answers were shorter than my attention span. But hey, at least he got up there and I felt he was himself, which is always a plus. And then here's a picture of a sky allowing us to transition easily into wide receiver Sky Moore's presser. Sky thinks the receiving room he's walking into is already very good, but he will contribute some versatility and he is excited about that. He then touched on his hamstring injury saying, No, nah, I feel like I, it's getting better in, in, in it's minor hamstring tweak. I'm just working with Rick right now. And, um, I'm going to be back soon. So yeah, get well soon, buddy. He has a couple teammates here from Western Michigan at camp as well. It's Bryce Nunley and Mike Caliendo. So we're, we're Western Michigan is well represented in the camp. I, it's just happy to get back on the field with those guys. And Sky feels like Kansas City is the best system for him. The playbook is dynamic and quote unstoppable, which you could say maybe that's a bit of a reach or maybe even that he was reaching for the Sky, but he's been enjoying learning said playbook thus far. Stefan Diggs is someone he studies and he does a lot of the things that Sky himself tries to emulate. I mean, shoot, I would not complain one bit if he has that kind of impact on this team. I'll tell you that much. Yes, please. He talked with Mahomes a couple times briefly with the goal of helping him get ready for the next step, which in his own words is carving his role out here on the offense so they can go and get another Super Bowl win. From there, the sun set and the sky was no longer visible. So I do apologize about that. But what did you guys think of day two of the rookie minicamp, the pressers, videos, and all of that good stuff? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you're new, make sure to sub for more daily news like this and check out the this video here from yesterday where I show video clips from day one of the rookie minicamp and talk more in depth about Justin Ross 
and much more. So until next time, let's go, let's go. How about those? <laughs>